Hello, everybody. Hello, Venerable Sir. Hello, Venerable Sir. Hello, Venerable Sir. So I think we can start every every time like this, uh, 10, uh, 10 minutes la later, um, because I think our children class will always take a little more time. They are reading their summaries of, um, of stories. And so I think we will always be about 10 minutes late. So we can set it uh, as normal. So. So that would be 9, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Saturday, right, of New York time. And it would be 6 a.m. 9, 10, 9, 10. And it actually is now, no, they are also changed the time, right? So it is actually 7. Possible now? It'd be 6. 6 is p.m. I see. So it's 6 10 p.m. for California. Good. So let's start with meditation. You can sit in a comfortable meditation posture. Make sure your back is erect. So as the back is erect, side cast down, we can make the first determination in our minds voicelessly from now on for 10 minutes. I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. And with that determination, we can gently lovingly notice the flat piece of flesh at the top of the head. We allow it to be heavy. And change it. We continue to the forehead, eyes, nose, lips, chin, cheeks, Ears, back of the head. We allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the head to be happy. We continue to the neck, 
shoulders, arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, tips of fingers, chest, abdomen, back, We allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the upper part of the body to be heavy. to the buttocks, thighs, knees, calves, heels, soles, Toes, tips of toes. We allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the body to be happy. And changing. And as we give freedom to the body to be the way it is, we ourselves experience freedom from worry about the body. So let's watch this freedom, let's enjoy this peace.
Now let's share our peace with other living beings. May all beings, including me, be in peace. May all beings, including me, be in peace. because the time for the sitting is finished. Let's make the last determination in our minds listlessly. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. when we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. And when we have changed the way of our sitting, we can take one more minute to enjoy the peace we gained in meditation. Very well. I'm um, doing this at 9.30. Okay. Can you take this cup? You have a class at 9.00, okay. Can you, can you take this cup? Okay. All right, so <clears throat> today I will give you five precepts, three refuges with the Sri Lankan pronunciation. So, because you already know it, I will be showing you the paper and we can start right away. So you can unmute yourself.
and put your hands together and you can start. Yaman Badami Tang Vadeta. Am Panti. Am Panti. Isarane Nasaha. Isarane Nasaha. Pancha Silan Dhammang Yajami. Pancha Silan Dhammang Yajami. Anukka Hankatva. Anukka Hankatva. Silan Deta Me Panti. Anukampan Upadaya. Anukampan Upadaya. Duti Yampi Aham Panti. Duti Yampi Aham Panti. Tisara Nena Saha. Tisara Nena Saha. Pancha Silan Dhammang Yaya. Pancha Silan Dhammang Yaya. Anukka Hankatva. Silang Deta Me Pante Silang Deta Me Pante Anu Kampang Upadaya Anu Kampang Upadaya Tati Yampi Aham Pante Tati Yampi Aham Pante Tisara Nena Saha Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajami Anukka Hankatva Silang Deta Me Pante Anukampang Upadaya Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Yes. Well, when you are saying, when you finish one time, just wait to make sure that everybody finished, and then you can start another one. And then again, you wait a little. If you see somebody saying, Zamudasa, ah, okay, so you wait. And then you can start a new one. Uh, so that uh, you're all somewhat, you know, unisono, do you know that word? Unisono means one sound. Unisono. All right, so let's continue. Buddhang saranangat chami dhammang saranangat chami sanghang saranangat chami. Buddhang saranangat chami dhammang saranangat chami sanghang chami. Duti yampi buddhang saranangat chami duti yampi dhammang saranangat chami. Tati yampi buddhang saranangat chami tati yampi dhammang saranangat chami tati yampi sanghang saranangat chami Sarana Gamanang Paripuna Pana Tipata Vera Manisik Hapang Samadiami. Adinna dana vera manisikha padang samadhyami. Adinna dana vera manisikha padang samadhyami. Kame sumicha jara vera manisikha padang samadhyami. Kame sumicha jara vera manisikha padang samadhyami. Musavada Vera Manisikha Padang Samadhyami Musavada Vera Manisikha Padang Samadhyami 
Isranena Sadhing Pancha Silang Dhammang Sadhukang Surakidang Katva Appamadena Sampadeta Amen. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. Okay, so let's move on to uh, to the homeworks. So you are reading the long story about Venerable Sariputta, about Venerable Mogalana, and this is actually a very important story. So um, some of you, uh, so each of you have received some portion of the story, but it would be good if you can actually read it all. All right. So let me see uh, where you're able to uh, to publish it in uh, in Facebook. Your summary. If yes, you can nod your head like this. So I see. Yes, yes, I yes. Sandy yes. Alma. Okay, Caitlin. Yamo, yeah, did you did you actually know what what was your portion? Did you read the story? In the, I didn't get a portion. Um, I left a comment under your comment. Um, okay, so let me see. Oh, that's right. So let me see, what is that? Uh, but I summarized, um, I think up to page from 149 to 162. Okay. And did you did you share it with me in the in I can do it. I can do you, it right now. You can do it. Okay, that's great. So that's pretty good. So uh do I have your Yes, I do. Very well. Uh, sure. I think I didn't find your homework for the ne for the previous week. Did you read the story? Yes. Which which one was that one? Was that uh, I was assigned. I was assigned number one sixty two to one sixty. One sixty five, one sixty two to one sixty five. At that time, it was actually not assigned because we did not have previous class. So um, we were talking about the class before the last week. Because last week we did not have class. We did not have class on Easter. Uh, therefore, I'm talking about the story one six, which was for everybody about the Chulakala Mahakala, the uh, two brothers, one. Uh, Chulakala, Mahakala. I think that's the story about how um, one became an arahant in the cemetery, right? And the other one, um, the other one was disrobed by his wives. Who can tell me? I can find my notes and submit it. Yaza can tell me. Yaza, do you remember that story? The uh, last story we did. Uh, not the one for this class, but the one for the previous class. That was the story I think we're reading about Kala Junior and Kala Senior, about the two brothers, how one became uh, arahant at the cemetery and the other one was disrobed by his, by his wives. Right? So, uh, Yaza, I think I gave it to everyone, right? Because I can see that I am uh, noting separation only from the last <laughs> time that we met. So only, only for today. Uh, Pshu, did you read the story? Uh, Chulakala Mahakala about the two brothers? Uh, 
uh, or sure, we, we can do it like this. Until which story, until where did you read Dhammapada so far? Now you're muted, sure. I cannot hear you. For which one is that? Uh, in the Dhammapada commentary, until which part did you read the Dhammapada commentary? Uh, let me see. I stopped around we, we, 1.7. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.7. Okay, that's good. So um, uh, many of you actually didn't come even the previous class on the 26th of March. Um, so I have assigned the parts in such a way that hopefully at least one person will have read at least one part. So uh, then... And if more people read that one part, because I assigned to each person something, except for Yamo, for some uh, mysterious reason, um, then uh, Yamo. So, what what was the range that you read? I read from about one forty nine to one sixty two. Oh, that's old. That's story one seven, right? Um, one eight. Okay. Yes, I can see. Yes. Uh. Yes, it's right. Perfect. So um, let's start. Uh, let's start with Langholm. Uh, Langholm, uh, did you already finish the book, What the Buddha Taught, and uh, the Teenage Brain? I finished it, yeah. Yeah, finished it all. Uh, what about the introduction to Dhammapada? Have you started to read uh, the introduction to Dhammapada commentary? Mm, no. I see. So you can start. Alma, have you already started to read the introduction to Dhammapada commentary? No. Not yet. That's good. So you're on the same on the, in the same place. So Alma and Langholm can read Dhammapada a commentary introduction. So that's before the stories start. It's about 100 pages before the stories start. So I would like to ask you to read the first 20 pages of the introduction. Okay, so that will be, let me see what exactly that is. So that's PDF page. You can start uh, PDF page uh, 23. So you can start PDF page 23. Uh, it says introduction. Look at this. The page numbers are not real page numbers. They're the, the Roman or what are they called? Well, Roman, Roman numbers. So you start at page 23 of the PDF of the PDF page, you see 23 in here. And um, so you can read the first 20 pages. It's a little bit hard to read, but if you can, then after four weeks, you're pretty much done. So um, from 23, you can read until 40. Okay, craving. So that's where you can finish. Uh, page 41, craving with big C at the top. And you start the introduction. So this way, after four weeks, you're nicely done with all the introduction and you have no more additional homework. Amo, do you think you can make it? Yes. Super. And uh, Langholm? I can make it. Super. Great. Anyone else? Um, Yamo, you, you have read all the introduction and Buddha, uh, 
the what the Buddha taught and also the teenage brain, right? Okay. So actually just Al Mao and Leng Hong. There were some other students who also had to follow, but uh, either they didn't come today. Either they didn't come today and if they come next time, that's fine. Um, or uh, they actually had to move to um, grade four. Or uh, they are actually not allowed to follow the class anymore. Because when you miss three times without a homework, then you're actually not allowed to follow the class. What you could do when you miss three times uh, to follow the class again, you need to do the homeworks for the class, for all of the classes that you missed. You need to send it to me. And then if I am fine with those homeworks, then you can uh, follow that class. So make sure that you never miss more than two times. For example, now Paris has missed already two times and she did not make homework because if you do your homework, then it doesn't count as absence, All right? So even so, if you uh, see, oh, I have two absences, and now it would be third. So just make sure that you do your homework for the second absence, so that you do not have three absences, you know, in four. If you miss one time, anyway, make uh, the homework so that it doesn't count as your absence. Therefore, you never need to worry. Okay, great. Alma, uh, you, are you sitting on a carpet or on just blank floor? I'm sitting on a carpet. Good, yes. Make sure that it's not too cold so you don't get ill. And um, we can start with the reading. So I would like to ask Leng Hong to read, uh, to read um, uh, what she has noted from the pages 61 to 64 of what the Buddha did. And you're muted. I cannot hear you. Which one? Yes. So you read the last portion of what the Buddha taught, right? The pages 61 to 64. Can you read for us your note from there? Not ready. So I'll ask Alma to read for us that portion. Do you want me to read my notes? Yes, please. Um, there was once three brothers named Kulajala and... Majin no, that, that's for Dhammapada. I would like to ask you for your note from what the Buddha taught from the last portion. I don't have it with me. Sorry? Mm -hmm. I don't have my notes with me. Uh, you don't have notes from that. Uh -huh. um, uh, Lingham, do you have the note? I think so. Uh, I, think I, will, I will recognize. The first factor of the Eightfold Noble Path is the right view. Right view are the beliefs and attitudes that a Buddhist practitioner should have in order to progress towards Nibbana. Mm -hmm. Very well. Uh, I cannot tell whether this is from the last portion. The last portion of the book talks a little about politics, about the roles of the king, about kings and um, things like that. I'm not sure whether Eightfold Noble Path is there, but whatever, we have something. And we can move on. So I will ask Caitlin, can you please read for us your uh, summary of 149 to 156 pages? Um, a teacher was born as a Brahmin prince and his name was Sumedha. Hmm. After becoming proficient in his studies and gaining a lot of inheritance from his mother and father, Sumedha decided to retire from the world and adopt an anchorite, which won him supernatural powers. One day, Sumedha was flying and came across two paths, one cleared and one not cleared. Sumedha chose the road that was not clear and made himself a bridge to cross. 
The teacher taught Sumedha about all the different Buddhas and what one could try to attain to become one. Sumedha finally fulfilled all 30 perfections and was born as Visantara. He was told to help the worlds of the people and the gods, so he adopted the life of a monk and taught monks how to attain Arahaship. Is Visantara? Should I? Yes. But later uh, he became a Buddha, then, then he helped. He could help as Vesantara, although I'm not aware of that. Uh, he could help as Buddha to be to attain jhana, deep levels of concentration. And you will have it in Dhammapara as um, something like eight attainments or eight supernatural attainments or something like this. So uh, that means actually jhana, deep levels of concentration. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so they could teach um, other people in the world. Um, it's like this. In Buddhism, there are two kinds of attainments. There are concentration attainment and insight attainment. Concentration attainment is based on concentrating your mind on a specific object, like white color, yellow color, blue color, or disk of um, earth, of soil, or... A uh, hole through which you can see water, or a hole through which you can see we wind, or a hole through which you see fire, or the qualities of the Buddha, qualities of the Buddha's teachings, Dhamma, qualities of the community of monks, Sangha, or the breath, or loving kindness, compassion, mutual joy, um, and uh, equanimity, and so on and on. You have 40 objects like this for concentration. Then there is insight. In insight, you're observing arising, passing of the body and mind. So it's something else. Now, before the Buddha became a Buddha, he did not know. He was not proficient in this practice as an enlightened person because he became enlightened for the very first time when, be, when he became a Buddha. Until then, never ever in any kind of history or non-history or legend or whatever, he never ever achieved any enlightenment before that. So that was the first moment when the Buddha achieved enlightenment. And for everyone here who uh, has not attained enlightenment in this life, you could not have attained enlightenment in past lives. Because once you achieve enlightenment, you are on the sure way out of river. So it's not possible that someone maybe attained enlightenment billions and billions of years ago and they forgot it and now they have to attain it again. Not at all. With concentration, yes. With concentration, you can achieve concentration, you can lose it, you have to try for it again. But with enlightenment, not. As soon as you attain enlightenment, you never lose it, never ever in the future. Even whatever you, way you die or whatever happens to you in the next life, you're still, the enlightenment is there. You do not try to achieve it again. Instead, you build on it for, with the higher levels. So there are four levels. With the first level, you have seven more lives. With the second level, you have one more life. With the third level, you have one more life in the Brahma world. And with the fourth level, you are liberated already at death of this very life. And the Buddha became uh, achieved the fourth level. So he, uh, so at death he was fully liberated from this uh, from this world. And others, you all can also become arahants. You can achieve the fourth level, and therefore at the end of this life you would be totally liberated from all arising passing of body and mind. But usually people attain only the first level or the second level. There are people who have achieved the third level. The third level is special by total cutting off lust and hatred. All right. Even the first and second level can still fall in love and they can have children and like that. But the third one won't because for the third one, uh, lust and hatred really don't make any sense. So they don't have it anymore and they will not have any more uh, sexual intercourse. They will never get married and so on because they see that really doesn't make any sense. And then the fourth level, of course, is building on the third level. And the fourth level is furthermore freed from this desire for the concentration practice. 
because the third level appreciates these concentration levels of concentration. That concentration also brings psychic powers. So, the, so someone who has achieved the third level of enlightenment can actually have, uh, can actually still practice to achieve uh, psychic powers. But the fourth level sees that even the psychic powers don't make sense. So the fourth level is entirely liberated from greed for arising, passing consciousness. So until the second level of enlightenment, the first level and the no level, uh, they have sti they still see that there is something beautiful in sensual pleasures. The third level does not see anything beautiful in sensual pleasures, but he still can see uh, something beautiful in meditation pleasures. The fourth level sees that none of those are beautiful for the very for two main reasons. Number one, they're impermanent. So it doesn't make sense because you will lose them. In comparison to Nibbana, which you do not lose. Like for people who do not have Nibbana, who do not have Jhana, like in Europe or in the US, it makes sense. Sensual pleasures make sense because there is nothing that is permanent. From their point, everything is impermanent. So let's search just the best thing in the impermanent. Whereas in Buddhism, because we have a permanent one, we always compare it to the permanent one. And that's why we don't see any sense in sensual pleasures, because we compare it to the Nibbana, which is permanent. So it's a little difficult for people in Europe, in the US, in, in Australia, to understand why would you need, why would you want to get rid of sensual pleasures? Because again, they don't know that you compare it with Nibbana. For them, they have nothing to compare it to. Okay, so uh, this is uh, for the attainments. And before the Buddha became a Buddha, he had no enlightenment. He had only concentration. So what he could teach as Vesantara was only, uh, to, to his students, was only, but I am not aware that Vesantara would have that many students. I think there was a different voice. doesn't matter. So uh, whatever were his students, he taught his students the... Uh, levels of concentration and the psychic powers. And that was Sumedha. We are talking about Sumedha. Sumedha actually did have a lot. Uh, I think he had a lot of students. And uh, so uh, Sumedha had all of those attainments, but no enlightenment at all, even a little bit. For enlightenment, there are 16 levels. 16 levels for attainment of the first level of enlightenment. For each of the four, you will need to go through um, one way or another of the 16, but that's a little weird. Well, you need to get the 16 at least for the first level of enlightenment. Now, these 16 levels of enlightenment are basically understanding the nature of the body and the mind. That's all. But you understand it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Buddha-to-be cannot attain the level 15 of the 16, because level 15 is the enlightenment itself. 16 is only considering, they call it reflecting, of what happened. So when you attain enlightenment, you then, you then consider what has happened, because it's a big thing. So you consider that. So those are level 15 is the enlightenment, 16 is considering the enlightenment. 14 is a moment that leads you towards enlightenment. So if you get that moment, you will get also the main enlightenment. So the Buddha-to-be cannot attain even level 14, because the 14 is basically indivisible from the 15. The 14 is basically, it's coming, it's coming. And 15 it is, this is it, all right? So um, the Buddha to be can attain until the level 13. That's a special knowledge. Usually people don't know this. So I'm now sharing with you some deep, deep knowledge. All right. So there are 16 levels of, uh, of uh, knowledge, of insight knowledge. And for enlightenment, you need level 14. If you get 14, you get 15 automatically and therefore 16 follows. And the Buddha to be, which the, this is basic knowledge, but the Buddha to be, which is a higher knowledge, is that Buddha to be can have maximum up to 13. 
cannot have 14, cannot have 15, cannot have 16. And then when he becomes the Buddha, he gets not only the 16, which is for the first level, but he gets the second, third, and fourth level of enlightenment as well. All right. So um, now, Caitlin, is it clear? Nice. Yes, thank you, Venerable Sir. Have you finished your summary for, uh, for, uh, fr from your notes, or did we interrupt it? You finished? Yes. So uh, let's uh, hear Leng Leng Hong. Uh, did you uh, did you write your summary from pages one hundred and forty nine to one hundred and fifty six? Yeah. Yes. I must. Yeah. Uh, Leng Hong, I am listening to your summary. Oh. Do I did talk you have about? Uh, do you have the summary from the pages 149 until 156? Yes. So do I finish? Do I start with Apatissa or do I restart the sum Sumita? Um, I think 149 is the very start. You basically will be saying what Caitlin said, but in your words. Okay. Uh, the teacher was born as a Brahman, hence named Sumita, who retired from the world and attained supernatural powers. Sumita decided to select the portion of the world and let the teacher go across him to continue his journey. The teacher then said that he will become a Buddha named Gautama. Sumita fulfilled the 10 perfections, uh, the 10 minor perfections and the 10 major perfections. He was reborn as Visantara and reborn again in the heaven of the two Sita gods. He was addressed to re rescue the worlds of men and gods, discover the region of the deathless. He adopted a life of a monk, caused his monks to attain arahatship, and sent the monks to go into the world teaching and preaching. Yes, so the Buddha helped monks to become arahants, uh, Vasantara did not, all right? Uh, two things, uh, you may be careful about your note because it's misleading. Number one, that Sumedha attained the ten, pa the 10 perfections, he did not. He was thinking about them and he started to work on them. Only when uh, the, only the Vasantara actually uh, fulfilled, completed the 10 perfections. All right, so Sumedha started working on them and Vesantara finished the work. And uh, second thing, it seemed almost as if, uh, as if Sumedha, when he died, he was born as Vesantara. Absolutely not. In between, there are many, 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 many lives, billions and billions and billions of uh, years. So, no, after Sumedha died, he was born as someone else and someone else and someone else and something else and someone else and something else for many, 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 many lives. And then in the end, he was born as Vesantara. Okay? So, next, let's... Uh, oh, Florence is not here with us. So, what about Paris? Oh... Burns and Paris have the same thing. So we will actually not hear that portion. That's not good at all. But I will assign the portion to some of you who are here so that we are sure that we will have it next time. Okay, so we will have to skip the portion of five pages, 157 to 162. And we move on. Uh, to the other portion, and that will uh, that was prepared by one person, and that's Pshu. So I'm listening. Hold on, let me get to the the group. Uh, you have 162 to 165. Yes, I put it on the Facebook group. Let me okay. upload it. Yes, I mean.
So before uh, Pyo, uh, let's ask Yamo to read uh, her summary. I said there are four incalculables and Sumedha is prophesied to become Buddha. In another story, two boys, Kalita and Sari, are born and plan to retire from the world and become monks. And in the last story I read, there are two brothers, Maha and Kulakala, who want to gift unripe rice to monks. And I plan to write more but I ended it there. I plan but to read the whole chapter. Is brothers who plan to raise... Uh, can, can you tell me more about these brothers who plan to give rice to monks? Oh yes, that's the story about uh, about the, the ghosts who then uh, were visiting the Buddhas for help. And in the end, they got help from King Bimbisana, right? Yes, 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 good, we're done. So, um, so, Pshu, I'm missing. Okay. I said, this story talks about three brothers who made a wish to obtain moderate ship. How do you say that? Ship? Ed Radahash Rada ship. Arahant ship. Arahant ship. It also Arahant. tells the story of a king and his four sons, including the Buddha Pusa, and their desire to entertain their brother. The king initially refuses, but later allows them to do so for about three months. During this time, the treasurer and the steward of the three brothers misuses their responsibilities of providing alms to the congregation of monks, causing the rebirth of the world of ghosts after death. Okay, very well. Um, I see in the homework somebody has pasted as e e ne. Who is that? Is anyone of you? Oh, that's Amo. Okay, Amo. Always remember that uh, there needs to be your name and then the text. And for Pyo also, you need to. Even though your name in Facebook is the same as your name, anyway, please type it up. Type up your name, enter, and then your summary. All right. Like for Almao now, I would not be able to recognize that he actually did his homework. So, type up your name. Sorry. Maybe you did it, but uh, somebody who posted it for you <laughs> didn't think that the name is important there. Otherwise, everybody actually understood that. I see. Uh, Yamo, ideally, you ask me in Viber. If you ask me in the comments, probably I will not see it. Right, so uh, in Viber, even in Viber, I'll probably not see it because sometimes I open Viber on Sundays only, but still it's better. And the best way to ever contact me here for everybody, if you ever want to contact me with anything ever is on my email, monksarana at gmail.com. Okay, so that's the fastest way to get to me, um, usually within 12 hours. I will answer. All right. So um, that was true. True is gone. So now let's uh, listen to. Now let's listen to. Uh, Sunny. Uh, Sariputta was reborn as Prince Sarada, while Moglayana was reborn as Householder Sirivada and they grew up together as friends. One day, Prince Sarada decides to retire from the world and seek the way of release. He invites Sirivada to retire with him, but Sirivada declines. By the time Buddha Ana Anomadasi appears, Sarada had acquired five supernatural facilities and the eight higher attainments. When Sarada meets the Buddha, he makes an earnest wish to become a chief dis disciple, disciple of a Buddha in his future, and later on, Sirivada will follow, requesting a place of a sec of second disciple. Yes, then, uh, yes, yes, that, that was the story about so many monks. <laughs> many, 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 many monks. <laughs> I cannot imagine how they did that. All right, so Yasa, uh, you had story 1.7. Can you please read for us the name of the story as well? 
Okay, so the name of the story was Devadatta Wears an Unbecoming Robe. One day, Venerable Sariputta was preaching a law about the blessing of wealth, wealth and the blessing of retinue, where one who gives and urges to give would receive these blessings for a hundred thousand dates of ex existences. A lay disciple listening to Venerable Sariputta decided to invite the chief disciple to a meal and asked others to also give alms to the monks. One householder gave a robe worth thousands of pieces of gold gold where the monk where the which the monks decided to give it to Devadatta and the monks soon realized that the robe was unbecoming to him the buddha explained that this is ha that this had happened before in a previous existence and proceeded to tell a story of the past yeah the point is that devadatta had to give the robe to venerable sariputta because devadatta did not have even the first level of enlightenment Whereas Sariputta, Venerable Sariputta, had the fourth, the highest. So the idea is that and uh, that uh, Devarata had to do it. Moreover, the robe donation happened because of Venerable Sariputta's Tamma teaching. So if uh, it is because of Venerable Sariputta's Tamma teaching, well, then he is the benefactor, right? So he de definitely deserves to get the robe. But uh, there is a misleading point in your note. It seems as if the monks who decided for uh, the robe for Devadatta later thought that it was actually misplaced. Actually, that I think is misunderstood. It's just that the lay people asked for suggestion from monks who um, appreciated Devadatta. And they did not think that it's misplaced even later. It's just that the other monks who did not appreciate Devadatta thought that it was misplaced. Now Devadatta um, in the beginning was not bad. He tried meditation, he followed the rules, he was very strict and so on. But as the time went, Devadatta, as the time went, Devadatta actually As the time went, Devarata actually decided that he wants to be the Buddha, the next Buddha, without attaining Buddhahood. So he just wanted to be the king of the community of monks. But the Buddha did not allow that, so Devarata tried to kill Buddha in various ways. Therefore, we actually do not call him venerable. He was a monk, it's true, but our scriptures do not call him venerable. If it is venerable Sariputta, venerable Mokalana, you always have Ayasma Sariputto, Ayasma Moggallano, Ayasma Anando. But you do not have Ayasma Devarato. No, no. You have just Devarato. And um, that's probably because Devarato was um, too evil to deserve the title of Ayasma, Venerable. All right, so I think that was more than enough for today. Now, now let's assign uh, the next reading. So we will need to read now a little faster so that we can finish the whole book. You know, the book has over a thousand pages and it doesn't have any appendix or stuff like that at the end. It's just stories and stories all the way until the last page. So um, we need to be careful and um, uh, do do the reading so that it's really done. And I will, yes, that's fine. I've already listened to Sunday. Okay, that's good. Uh, Amo was sharing with us uh, the, the other thing. So this was until 172. That's good. Pretty good. So let's move on. Again, I would like to encourage you, everyone, to read the whole story 1.8, if you haven't done that yet. And now we have uh, story uh, 1.9, 1.9, which is relatively short. 
it is until yeah 1.9 is very short it's about seven pages six and a half pages so I gave Aumau the portion that we lost today, so 157 to 162. Uh, and we will be listening to it next time, please. Now I will give to Caitlin. I will give to Caitlin story 1.9. Then uh, story 1.10 is even shorter, it's just three pages. So that is for Leng Hong. You see, I'm giving those people oops, how to do this. It doesn't allow me to write 1.10. No. OK, so uh, Langhom will be reading uh, the 20 pages of the introduction and also the very short story. Um, Amal will be reading basically what I would wish that he has already read anyway, the portion of the story we've just finished. And uh, then we have story 11, which is also extremely short. So that will be for, that will be for Pyo. Pyo is gone, but hopefully he can do this. Then uh, uh, another story, but that one is a little longer. There is one huge story, and I think that's this one. That's, uh, I think, the biggest story of all. Let me see. 1.12. Devarata scarier? Well, that's not that, bad, that big. Oh, here it is. Lady Sumana. That's an extremely long story. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get this Devarata done. So Devarata has, as you can see, two portions. So I will assign Devadatta to Sandi and Yaza. So Sandi will have Devadatta A. Look at this, Devadatta Savatthu. And it will be just the first portion, which finishes right here, Chief Disciples. And Yaza will have 12B, all right? 12B. 12B is quite long. It's like two, four, six. Well, here, th this one is easy to read. It's just a poem. So it would be two, five, eight pages. It's about eight pages. Do you think, Yaza, you could make it? I think I'll be able to read that in a week's time. In a week, yeah, of course, you have the whole week. So I'm giving 12B to Yaza. And then we are starting this big thing, Sumana Devi. It is not important. It is huge, but it's not important. Um, uh huh. So. That's someone else. Okay, so we are not there yet. Okay, so Sumana is very short, just a few pages. It is about two pages for Yamal. So we actually will not be working with this yet. And I will assign to Florence and Paris, who are not in here, a very short one, which is the two brethren, 1.14. All right, so I will, uh, I will uh, publish for you who, who has walked in Viber very soon, so you cannot get wrong. But again, uh, just for information, or I can actually send in the chat box.
All right. So Alma we will be reading what we uh, what we were missing today, 157 to 162. Then uh, uh, Pure will be reading 1.11, 111. Then Sandy will be reading 112a, Yasa 112b, Yamon 113, and Paris and Florence will be reading 114, and Caitlin will be reading 19. Does anyone have any question? Anything you'd like to say about this? All right. Uh, now, regarding the posts in Facebook, I will uh, try to make them as soon as possible. So make sure that uh, it's ideally you read as soon as possible so you don't need to think about it and you cannot get it late. Thank you very much for coming. It was a pleasure to see you and I hope to see you again next week. May you be happy, may you be healthy and may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nipah. Goodbye, Venerable Sir. Goodbye, Venerable Sir. Goodbye, Venerable Sir. Goodbye, Venerable Sir.